Thank you so very much. God bless the nation of Israel. And God bless the United States of America. We are here today, what an uplifting, tremendous gathering as we stand together to stand with Israel. As rockets rain down in the sky from Hamas, as the people of Israel are under direct terrorist attack, the stakes have never been higher for us to stand unshakably with our friend and ally, the nation of Israel. Their fight is our fight. Their enemies are our enemies. There is a reason why some folks seem to dislike positive debate. There is a reason why the enemies of Israel refer to Israel as the little Satan and America as the great Satan. Because the values of Israel, a liberal democracy that respects human rights, that respects freedom, are fundamentally the very same values as the United States of America. And we need to reject the false moral equivalency that is so constantly peddled between the nation of Israel defending itself and the terrorists seeking to murder innocent civilians. Right. Prime Minister Netanyahu recently put it very eloquently when describing the Hamas terrorists, where he said, in Israel, we use our missiles to defend civilians. Whereas Hamas, they use their civilians to defend their missiles. Yeah. Anyone who declares a moral equivalency between, between terrorists lobbying in missiles seeking to murder innocent men, women, and children, and the nation of Israel responding to defend itself and stop that terrorist attack, anyone who says those two are morally equivalent is lying to you. You know, we, saw, we have seen strikingly the contrast in values just in recent months. Authority, stop inciting hatred in Israel. Stop celebrating and lionizing terrorists. And stop supporting directly those who murder the innocent. You know, just recently, we saw three teenagers kidnapped and murdered in Israel in a grotesque act of terrorism carried out by Hamas. It demonstrated the values of Hamas because these murderers are celebrated as heroes. Now, sadly, tragically, we saw a response to that of an innocent Palestinian teenager murdered as well. And the response of the respective governments, I think, was deeply revealing. When that innocent Palestinian teenager was murdered in retribution, the government of Israel responded by condemning categorically that act of violence. by investigating and arresting the murderers that killed that teenager. And they will be prosecuting those murderers with the full force of law. In contrast, Hamas and the PA have done nothing to capture the criminals, the terrorists who murdered three innocent teenagers other than celebrate them as heroes. You know, I'm proud to say this week, a bill that I introduced in the United States Senate 
the bill to authorize the State Department to offer as a reward up to $5 million for the capture of those who murdered Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Naftali was an American citizen as well as an Israeli citizen. And it demonstrated that these terrorists don't distinguish between Israelis and Americans, they just wanted to kill three Jewish teenagers. It didn't matter where they came from. I'm proud to tell you this legislation is bipartisan legislation. It's co-sponsored by Senator Bob Menendez. And just this week, it passed the Senate Foreign Relations Committee unanimously. The final thing I would encourage all of us to do is we need to stand unequivocally against the nation of Iran acquiring nuclear weapon capability. We are approaching a very, very dangerous date of July 20th, when the administration is on the verge of completing what Prime Minister Netanyahu has rightly described as a very, very bad deal, as an historic mistake. And I'll tell you, I believe we are on the verge of repeating the very same mistakes the Clinton administration made in the 1990s with respect to North Korea. Where we relaxed sanctions in North Korea, billions of dollars flowed into North Korea, and they used that money to develop nuclear weapons. The Obama-Clinton carry foreign policy is repeating those very same mistakes. And in this instance, if Iran acquires nuclear weapons capability, it is the single greatest national security threat in the world to the United States of America. I am introducing legislation in the United States Senate to immediately reimpose sanctions on the nation of Iran. strengthen those sanctions and make them as crippling as humanly possible. And then to provide a simple and clear path for lifting those sanctions. If Iran wants to lift those sanctions, they need to stop and dismantle their nuclear weapons program. They need to hand over every pound of enriched uranium. And they need to dismantle the 19,000 centrifuges they have built in their country. They need to stop their ICBM program, which exists for one purpose, and that is if they get a nuclear weapon, to be able to use that nuclear weapon to murder innocents in Israel, in Europe, or here in America. If there's one principle that's been true from time immemorial is that bullies and tyrants do not respect weakness. Appeasement doesn't work. And so we are rallying here today to rally for peace, to rally for the values of freedom and human rights, and to rally for our unshakable ally, the nation of Israel. We are proud to stand side by side.